Hey all, welcome back to the channel. Hope this video this week finds you all happy, well, safe and enjoying the hobby. We're kicking off today by building both the ejector seats and the front and rear tubs on the kit. Just showing the tools that I'm using to uh, complete this process. They are both on sprue P, as can be clearly seen there. Thanks for tuning in this week, really appreciate it, uh, everybody. So, here we have me uh, cutting all the various parts to construct both seats using my trusty sprue cutters. Yes, they have seen better days, but you know what, they don't let me down, so that's all good. So, just cutting away the bits and pieces here to uh, lay them all out, and then we'll uh, get about gluing them together. So I go through this video, I shall have a look, basically I narrate over the videos uh, because I own dogs and you can guarantee they're going to make a racket when I'm actually doing my modelling. So uh, I, I narrate over it just to hopefully get rid of any distracting sounds just to make it a bit of a better quality for all involved. So here we are, I've, I've fast forwarded this or sped it up. Uh, it's just a case of using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, uh, getting the, uh, the kit, uh, getting the boost, uh, I'll get my words out eventually here guys getting the uh, ejector seats put together. Fantastic detail, I didn't see the need to buy any aftermarket parts for this because I thought the, the seats and the, the, the tubs uh, that come with the kit are more than adequate. In fact, they're very, very good. They've got excellent detail and they're very accurate as well. So just speeding through, applying the glue, letting it do its capillary reaction, getting everything together. Do forgive the state of my uh, hands throughout this video. I've done some work on my car during the week and trying to get oil out from under um, from all the nooks and crannies, as, as I'm sure you're aware, is, is a little bit difficult. So I uh, do apologise for being that guy with the dodgy fingernails today. There we go, nice detailed seats. And then they become two. Pair of seats, all the bits to put together, ready for paint. So on the subject of paint, Going to paint them a nice matte black because that's what they are. After doing my research, I've had a look through and uh, make sure I get the colour right. So it's just building up the layers gradually here, not using too much air pressure. 50, I think it's about 12 psi, nicely thinned, just gentle layers. You don't need to cake it on. We want to keep the detail. We don't want any runs. So if you're new to this, just just light dustings. I call them dustings. Obviously, you don't want it to be dusty. It's just nice, smooth, light layers build it up over time this is not to be rushed keeps the detail talking of rushing i've just uh, sped the video up just to uh to move things along so there we go one nice black seat we obviously painted both of them get a nice layers built up and good coverage nice opaque coverage they're very very happy with that Forgive me my hands, I've just, I had to put them in the background because I'm using a white background, I'm still learning to use the camera correctly, despite the fact I'm a photographer, get that. Uh, but the video camera itself is a different entity and it, it, because the seat was black it was, and the background was white, it was um, underexposed in the seat. So I decided to change to a black background, but then it obviously has got this hatching and so uh, it was deciding to focus on that mainly. Bit of a pain in the bum, but we'll get around it and I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit. Anyway, this is a process called dry brushing. So I got my silver enamel paint, dipped my very stiff brush, uh, bristled brush in that, and then basically use a bit of paper or a bit of tissue paper to take all the silver paint off. And that doesn't seem to make sense, but get as much of it off so that it's just, you can give it a light cut, uh, sort of brushing over. And what that does is it gives it a worn look, brings out the details as well in the seat, and just brings it to life. And if you overdo it, you can always touch, uh, sort of touch it back up with a bit of black spray, carefully in the right places, just to tone it back a little bit. And also, if you so desire, you can uh, give it a, a, a wash, uh, an oil-based wash. That's something I'll probably do a tutorial on later down the line. Well, you would be able to see it, but unfortunately, as I say, the camera was deciding to focus on the cutting mat in the background. Very annoying, but so uh, we get over that in a shortly. One seat, uh, getting a, a dry brush, which is great. Did both of them obviously and they came up superbly bringing out the details as you can see there. I do go back to a white background and just overexposed by a couple of stops on the camera and that's the I think that's the way I'm going to go forwards with, uh, with the recording. I've used a blue background here which again it means everything's exposed but I just don't like the colour of the background. Let me know what you think, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. 
There we go, one seat nicely detailed. You will see that the actual cushions there um, are, are, are more shiny than the rest of the seat. Now that's no accident, that is because in the real thing it's got a leather, the leather padded cushions there and they are shinier than the rest of the seat. So um, I, I thought I'd show that detail. And using my uh, thin brush, just to uh, paint the bottoms of the ejector uh, pull handles. Get them the right color. There we have it, looking good. Just a case with these seats of building up the details, adding the bits, little jigsaw puzzle coming together and looking uh, really good at the end. Very happy with it. One becomes two, and it's just a case of using my, uh, my detail brush just to add the little details. Here painting the caps gray here. Let's fast forward that because we know what it's like to paint, but it's just showing you the detail. I'm basically gonna try and do the vi this video build with the SU-27 in a step-by-step -step kind of way, but I'm not gonna sort of show every tiny piece, like cutting off every bit of sprue, painting every tiny detail. I don't think that's, that's it's gonna take forever if we do that. Let me know if you prefer that, but uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna steer away from that unless the masses say otherwise. I am gonna show little details like here where I'm painting the, the, the silver parts of the seat, the handles, just to show that it has been done and how to do it. But once I've obviously shown me doing one, I'm not gonna then show me doing it for everything, okay? I hope that's okay with you guys. I wanna try and keep it to the point, these videos. Otherwise, they're gonna be two, three hours long each, and I'm sure uh, if you're anything like me, your attention span isn't gonna last that long. Anyway, back to the subject. Painting the silver handles on the side of the seat. It's all coming together nicely now. Also, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think to all of this. Uh, I know I talk, uh, I'm trying to narrate the videos. I've seen that some YouTube channels showing where there's narration um, and there, or there's just music. Nice little picture just quickly there of the, the uh, finished seats while I waffle on. But yeah, I don't know, what, I'm gonna stay with doing narration, guys. Just purely just to talk people through it. If there's new people out there, describe why I'm doing what I'm doing, the process. Um, I think it's a bit more interesting. I personally don't like videos where it's just music and watching someone building a, a kit. It's, it's not for me. That's my taste. If you don't like that, let me know. I'm, I'm trying to get the balance right. Obviously, I've got music going in the background here just to break up the monotony. Uh, well, not the monotony, but the, the, the process of it all. Just to sort of lighten it a little bit and you're not just listening to my waffle. Anyhow, back to the subjects in hand. Uh, great details being shown on, uh, demonstrated here from the, the kit tub. It was a bit of a leap of faith having to sand all those details away to give a good surface for the decals to adhere to, I must admit. But I just thought I'd show you, in case you're gonna um, go down the route of painting the details yourselves, just to show that basically the, the details that come with the Great Wall Hobby uh, kit are excellent and you could go a slightly longer route of painting all the details in. If you're, if you're talented enough to do that, then fill your boots, that's great. So down to sanding all the, the, uh, the, the, the raised detail away. Now the reason I'm doing that is because the decals will really struggle to stick to the, the plastic parts if there's raised areas, it, it doesn't work. So I smooth it all down. It doesn't need to be too neat a job, but don't hack away at it and, and lose, lose the actual part or, or thin the part. Just get the details off, make it good enough just so that the decals will stick to it. I've sped this up just to uh, save the monotony of that. We all know how to sand, or if you don't buy now, uh, this will give you a rough idea. So clearing up, getting, grabbing the main part of the tub, clearing those bits off as well. There we have one smooth tub. So once we've sanded all the parts for the tub, it's time to glue the, the main parts together. The parts, as always, with a Great War, well, with recent times with Great War Hobby, I can't speak for, for their earlier stuff, but their newer stuff I happen to have on good authority, that it all goes together well. And I can tell you from the, on this kit, it goes together very well. So using, it, again, the Tamiya Thin Cement, Extra Thin Cement, just um, let the capillary action, uh, I don't know how many times I've said the word capillary in this video, but you get the idea, let the capillary action 
do its thing. As you can see, it does marvellously, getting a nice little plastic bead there as it sticks together well. That beading can come in very, very useful when you're putting two uh, fuselage halves together because it saves you having to fill anything to get rid of the seam line. So just getting the parts, the parts together now. The main instrument panel is next. Now it does look really rough here. I must admit, even I looked at this and thought, man, this don't look great. This is one battered old tub. But it, trust me, it all comes together well. It's all part of the process. Just gluing the uh, instrument panel in. Final check to make sure it's neat. Trying to get the angle right as well, which I must admit the instructions weren't overly forthcoming with uh, when it came to uh, telling me what angle I should have that leaning back at. I hope I've got it right, but I can obviously make sort of more adjustments when it comes to putting the tub into the main fuselage. But I'll worry about that later on. Two tubs, and there we go, ready for paint. So for paint, I use the excellent Mr. Hobby, Mr. Colour number 74. It's a pretty close uh, resemblance to the colour that comes with the decals. I, I put a slight drop of uh, royal or navy blue, I can't remember which one it was. Put a slight drop of that in when mixing it together just to bring the tone down a, 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 a touch. So using the Iwata Neo airbrush with a 0.3 needle, set to around about 12 psi at the airbrush. Don't need to uh, have mega psi with this. You can start doing light layers, building up the paint on the tub. Get it right, get it smooth. Like I say, do it right the first time, then you won't have to go back again and then do any touch-ups. I'll speed this up here just to get through the process quickly. I'm trying to show as much as I can of the process, but obviously I don't want to to sort of drag out any of the processes too, too far. So again, yep, yeah, just lightly building up the layers. Don't cake it on, guys. As you can see here, we've got details in the, in the sides of the cockpit that I wanna keep. If you cake that all in in one here, it's gonna lose the detail, it's gonna run, and it's, it's just not gonna look good. So just build it up slowly, take your time. Tomorrow's you will thank you for that because it will look good. So I give it a little dust over to start with and then let that sort of dry and then build up the layers. So it's almost got a key to stick to. And then we can see the color's pretty close. It, it, it looks a lot closer in, in, in normal light and, and uh, with the eye than it, the camera is actually showing there. So I'm not gonna go or, or narrate too hugely into the process of, uh, of um, of what the details are about the decals because I have got another video which I should if I get this right put a link up to in the top right corner now um, where I go into great depth about uh, the decals and their how they're what they're made of and how to attach them and uh, basically a review of them you can check that video out once you've had a look through this one if you like I hope you do and um, get to know these fantastic decals a, a bit better in that video so you get an instruction sheet, including uh, instructions for the control yoke, because they, believe it or not, they're decals for that as well. They really do cover everything in this uh, little um, little pack. It, it, it's great. So it's just a case of dipping the decal into some warm water and applying them to the tub. And it's a case of just building it up. Follow the process and it all comes together. It's really dead simple. Like I say, I'm not going to waffle on too much about it in this video. I'm just going to let the pictures um, show you what, what's to be said or what's to be done. As I say, I've touched, well, I've gone into it in more depth, the, the, the theory and the basis behind the decals in another video. This is just showing the process of putting them in the tub just for, for completeness, really. Pop the decal on some uh, tissue paper just to drain the water away. Just good practice, really. Bit of PVA glue. Don't cake it on. There's nice, this a nice little layer, and I use PVA glue over CA glue because it allows adjustment. 
You can use CA glue though, if you're feeling brave. It does work fine with it, but you've got to get your positioning bang on pretty much straight away. Try off the deck all. And as I touched on in the other video, these decals are made of vinyl, so they're pretty tough and durable. And then we'll pop it into place. I'm led to believe that Edward will be bringing out uh, 3D decals as well, so I wish them luck with their venture in that. Uh, the more more decal makers, the better, as far as I, I'm concerned. Gives us uh, modelers more variety and options. It's never a bad thing. And if, even if they're as half as good as Quinter Studios ones, they're going to be brilliant. So we go, just final adjustments with the tub, and oh, voila, one panel in situ. Just use the QT. We don't have to. Um, just to place in position, make sure there's no air bubbles or anything uh, underneath it, and then just final adjustments. This just gives you an idea of, uh, of what to do, and obviously I have to build up the cockpit piece by piece front and rear. It was great fun to do though, I really did enjoy it. They work so well these decals, they're, they're really really rather good. And there we go, a little bit of a close up just so you can have a look. And it's the main instrument panel it's turned to get stuck on. Nice close up there, just a little close up just to show the fantastic detail with the, with the uh, instrument panel that comes with it, absolutely amazing. I do speed up the process I think here, yes I do, um, just, just to, to, to move things along a little bit because you get the idea now. I just want you to include uh, a, a, a video of, or a bit of this video just showing them you know, one of the main attractions of the instrument panel being put into situ. There you go, nice and easy, just like that. And like I say, just build up the rest of the cockpit. There you go, one nice looking cockpit. And we move on. Okay, next up is just the cockpit, cockpit um, walls, I, I, I say, and it's just a case of grabbing out the handles and uh, as the final uh, sort of finishing touches to complete the cockpit build. Um, I use PVA glue on part 11 um, and I did for 10 and 1 and 7 to be honest with you, uh, but for 10, 1 and 7, those parts there, I personally um, would have, should have used and recommend using CA glue because uh, with the PVA glue it didn't dry quick enough and they tended to droop a little bit and, and weren't in the correct position. I'm using CA glue here for part 11 because that was only a flat piece that was, was to go in, 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 in situ basically. But yeah, for part 10, I definitely, uh, my advice to you guys would be to use CA glue because it's a more, you know, it's a very quick dry, and uh, it will it will stay in position because they were quite fiddly to do. Here we go, getting that handle in position correctly, and it's just a case of sticking the cockpit walls on. And there we have it. Before I pop the walls on, I thought I'd just show you inside the tub. Really, really pleased with that. You can see the I've also sprayed the uh, footwells um, olive drab and giving it a bit of a highlight in silver, sort of another dry brush in silver, just where the feet would have worn out the, the paint where the, the pilot sits in and doesn't, and, 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 scra and scrapes it away, I, I, for want of a better word. Okay, less of the waffle, just putting in um, the, the sides of the uh, cockpit now. Little lesson to be demonstrated here, I wasn't happy with the fit and that is because, um, as you can see there in white, there was just a bit of the sprue still attached. So a little lesson to us all, um, Make sure that the parts are, have got no flash or any, are all sanded back and it saves having to do this and it just ensures a better fit 
which in the long run works out better because later down the line if you've got a little bit that's out it may not you know the cockpit tub may not fit into the into the fuselage correctly so just to save any heartache further down the road sand it away and get the pits to, uh, get the bits to, to fit correctly from the get-go and you won't suffer further down there we go nice and popped in position and just waiting some glue Just while you watch me do this, I'd just like to thank you all very, very much for, for um, liking and subscribing if you have done already. It really means the world to me to know that um, my ramblings aren't just going out into the cyberspace uh, with no one listening. I, I really appreciate your, all your support with this venture. Yeah, it really does mean the world to me, so thank you ever so much for, for, for joining me. So we go, what the rear tub the seats in, the walls are in position, and that's one completed cockpit tub there. Really very, very happy with the level of details there. So next up, it's just a case of popping the other seat in. The eagle-eyed of you will notice there that part of the cockpit wall is missing. That's because I glued it in, and then whilst doing this, uh, the dry fit before filming, it pinged off somewhere. I didn't even notice that until after I put this seat in and um, went to do some photos that the carpet monster had claimed a victim. Damn that monster. Luckily, being the knight in shining armor that I am, I went and rescued said piece from the carpet monster, which is good because I really didn't fancy um, scratch building that, and I reattached it later on, as you will see. So, very happy with that. Two completed tubs. Next up, and the final part of this video, with uh, six minutes remaining, is the Quinta Decals uh, harnesses and seat pad. Again, PVA glue in the right place and it's just a case of following the instructions and working methodically through it. It's really simple, can't go wrong with it. Place the positions in, uh, the pieces in and it builds up to a really, what I think is a very realistic looking set of harnesses. I know there are you professionals out there that can do this from scratch building and I salute you because I tell you what, at this moment I can't. I hope I look back on this video in years to come and go, uh, and have that ability and look back and laugh at this. But at the moment, I'm relying on the aftermarket bits to uh, do the dirty work for me. So it's just a case of using tweezers, getting these in position, and trying not to make them look too rigid and, and uniform because they wouldn't on the real thing. They're not all like this, it's just this one particularly just didn't want to conform. It eventually behaved itself after a little word in its ear and uh, sorted itself out. So these are the you know, the extra bits of strapping or harnessing, placing those in position. Once these bits are dried down the bottom here, I then uh, sort of bent the ends down so they look like they were draping on the, on the cockpit floor, just for an added bit of realism. chest harnesses there just being added and like I've uh, previously touched on just building up building up the jigsaw so to speak of um, realism and just getting these bits added on on top you have to do follow the instructions you have to build it up in layers 
because um, obviously then there's a, a set of straps that go on top of that, then there's a set of straps that go on top of that. If you do it in the wrong order, it isn't going to look right. So as the video uh, draws to an end, it's just the long straps being placed in position. I tried to, um, I laid them down flat on the seat, but tried to give it sort of a, a not too uniform look as they would do in, in, in real life. Tried to give them that sort of um, non-straight and uniform sort of strap look. So as the video draws to an end, I'd like to thank you all very, very much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen um, and learned something if you're new to this or been encouraged if you're new to this and thought I fancy a go. If you do, if that is the case, get on it guys. Grab one of these kits. Even if you're new, I'm not a fan of, of people saying, oh, wait, you know, get your skill levels up, wait and then, and then buy yourself the expensive new kit. No, do you know what? These kits are great you know of all the expensive things you can be doing in the world building this hobby isn't one of those expensive um, hobbies get out there grab the kit and just do your best enjoy it can't recommend this kit enough it goes together so well yeah it's a little bit on the pricey side but it's so worth it, it, it you know especially if you knew it will, it will help you along the way and, and show you that this is it's a great and rewarding hobby this so thank you ever so much for tuning in I'm going to try and release a video every Thursday um, uh, because this is just a hobby to me so I have other things to do during the day and I try and sort of film during the week and then every Thursday release a video. So thanks again guys. If you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can find out when I release a new video. I look forward to any uh, comments and suggestions. Have a great week. Stay safe. Happy modelling. Take care. And toodaloo. Bye-bye.